Welcome one, welcome all, welcome Lauren to episode 15 of series two of Fab Life with Lauren and Lee. And we are talking the platy jubes. <laughs> it's the platy jubes. It is the platy jubes, Lily, and uh, we're here for it. We are here now, for that party time. For anyone who isn't aware, if you've joined this podcast late in the game and you haven't caught up, then... Um, uh, we like to abbreviate on this podcast. And when I say <laughs> we, I mean Lauren. She loves, as hey. she calls it, <laughs> an abbreve. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about the platy jubes, which is, of course, the platinum jubilee. But before we do that, um, I would like to issue a public apology. Last week, oh, here we go. the podcast, we'd, we'd missed the week before. I'd, I'd missed the week before because... I was severely, severely ill, but you know, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm better now. And thank you for all your well wishes. They mean, truly all mean the, the world. All the cards and flowers. Um, Thanks. All those cards and flowers that I never received. <laughs> and um, anyway, edited the podcast, had it ready to go. I thought, oh, I'll just upload it, go and make myself a cuppa. Woke up on the Thursday morning, people messaging, where's the podcast? No podcast. I thought, bloody hell, I'd only forgot to bloody upload the bugger, hadn't I? I'm oh, so I've bloody sorry. Seen, I've never seen the Insta inbox so busy, let me tell you. People were raging <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, so, yes. So, hopefully that never happens again. But Because uh, usually it drops, you know, I don't know if... Here's a little bit of technical knowledge for you. The podcast oh, drops 5 a.m., each it's time early, isn't it? Thursday. Greenwich it's early. Time, it's early. GMT. Well, the thing is, the thing is, is Lauren, not? I used to do 4 a.m., but I think the time difference, because Buzzsprout, our lovely uh, domain host and website, um, I think because that's American time, it then almost classes as if it's gone on uh, Wednesday. That bit- because right, I think it's five hours yeah. behind. And it messes so, up the stats. It was messing up our stats, wasn't it? Messed up our stats left, right and centre. Oh. So so what for anyone like? who doesn't know, it will drop at 5am thir- on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why it took, took me so long to say that properly. I was just confused. Anyway, yes, recovering. apologies. <laughs> apologies for my um, my slip up. I missed the week before. I didn't upload the podcast next. What's going to happen this week? Maybe I'll just, I don't know, faint. <laughs> Have you ever fainted, Lauren? Well, That's a question that I need to ask. Um, I knew, like I did a half faint in Man- in the Arndale once. Oh, is that did you? A heart and I What's sick? a half yeah. faint? Is that like a Gillian McKee type? When you kind of like, type? no, like you half do it, but then you like come, like I hit the deck, but like you kind of work, you're able to wake up like straight away kind of thing. Why did you faint? Did Topshop have a deal on or something? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, Was the vintage shop just... closed? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> probably Primark me, me and my mum used to go shopping in Manchester every Christmas and I was only like 15, 16 and um, you know when you're going in and out of shops and you've got your big Christmas coat on and all your bags and then you get like that really sweaty like travel sickness feeling oh, yeah. almost and I got that and I was like my mum turned to me and she was like whoa so she like tried to get me to a chair and I went Ooh. and it was yeah, in was Primark I don't think it was, pr- it was, it was, I think it was like, oh, I don't know, you'll have to ask my mum. It could have been Debenhams, actually. Oh, right. Yeah, that's just opposite Primark, if I remember rightly. Is it? Yeah. I remember I definitely bought some shoes in that Debenhams that Christmas. Oh, but it was a troubling time. My mum's fainted at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Oh, oh Christ, God. alive. Yeah. Why did she faint at the top of there? Was she just like, oh, a bit like vertigo <laughs> Maybe she was. She gets a bit travel sick as well, but maybe it was the hot thing again. So she, they all went up in the thing. Really? Why was, was it like, boiling like, in Paris? It must have been. I'll have to get... I can't remember. She's told me the story a few times. But yeah, ever so mortifying for my dad who was trying to take the, you know, on a nice romantic day out up the Eiffel Tower. Oi. And well, uh, she I'd... could have fainted. Uh, well, when I went up the Eiffel Tower, which is not a euphemism, I... Um... <laughs> The lift, she probably fainted at the lift. The lift is this crickety old kind of like style lift. And I'm not great with drops. Like I don't like bridges, as you know, and I'm not very good with, you know. And the lift, I was like, oh. And and because the Eiffel Tower is kind of um, like 
bent almost not bent but it's bent going up like it kind of goes it's a triangle oh, yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. isn't it yeah so yeah, like you're kind of to the side a little bit anyway we get to the first bit and I'm like, oh my God, it's huge. It's massive. My, I can't look down. And they're like, this is the first level. And I'm like, okay, we get to the second <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, like screaming. And then they say to us, oh, by the way, it's too windy today. So we can't let you go up to the top. So I was then oh, like, you were like, thank what? God. No, no, it made me even worse because they'd almost admitted that the wind conditions <laughs> could affect, like, it made me think, even though we were in the second bit, I was thinking, what? What if the wind all of a sudden picks up massively and we shouldn't even be in the second bit? Like, I started freaking <laughs> out. So um, I don't think I'll ever go up the Eiffel Tower again. But so it's no surprise she fainted. Yeah, so she fainted up there. Have you ever fainted? I've never touch wood fainted. I always remember um, Beth Johnson, a girl in our school, fainted once. We were in uh, design technology and um, we were watching this buffer machine and it was like spinning round loads and oh, it was no. like it would buff something up. And she was just watching it and all of a sudden, she fainted and her eyes rolled into the back of the head and and I shouted <laughs> over the drama. I shouted, <laughs> Oh my god, she's died and the teacher really told me off for apparently like, you know, sparking moral panic. And yeah. um, but she fainted. She'd fainted. <laughs> she'd yes, yeah, scare mong. She fainted <laughs> watching this thing spin around so much. It was oh, it God. was weird. But no, On I've never. And then someone I always remember once fainted in assembly in primary school. I think we were singing Autumn Days, which truly is one of the greatest hymns. Oh, it's ever going. a lovely hymn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I mustn't forget. And weirdly, I never did forget him fainting. He like fainted into his own crotch. Um, <laughs> well, there's worse places, you know. You could. I know, I know. Scratch. At least he, he fainted with a smile on his face. Let's tell you. Um, but, but, <laughs> oh, don't. It was primary school. Um, <laughs> so uh, yes, I have never fainted. I just wondered whether you had. You don't strike me as a fainter. No, but I do get travel sick, so that's like do that you? awful feeling. Yeah, re- quite bad. Like me and my brother, like anyone else. Yeah, me and my brother really badly get travel sick, so I have to like even if I'm on a London bus, I have to like sit and like look forward. Because if it's the, do you get the um, travel sick on planes? Not really, unless there's turbulence. I was sick once. Do and you get because scared like, on really planes? Are you a nervous flyer? No, I like rides and everything, no. don't I? So, like, Freddie always says to other people, because he knows a lot of, like, nervous flyers, he's like, just fly with Lauren because she's so not bothered. I'm, like, last on the plane. Like, I just, I don't have to do any rituals. You know, I could fly sober if I want to. I mean, I don't, because where's the fun in that? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, it's so fun. Because apparently, because of the lack of oxygen... You get more you get drunk drunks. on flights, oh, so so it's space and, I juice, mean, it's honestly. just so much fun. But I always remember poor Craig, my friend, is quite a nervous flyer, and I just remember we were in a, t- a particularly turby flight um, the to Miami, <laughs> and he wasn't great. And 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 but he didn't like the fact that I wasn't nervous. I don't think like some people find comfort in that but others it makes them more nervous do you know what I mean it's yeah, almost like, why like are you fine? and I I'm because also I was, I was a bit pissed and I was kind of like not really helping because I just remember <laughs> when when we were t- <laughs> when it was turbulent <laughs> he just held onto the seat tighter and I was going what good's that gonna do <laughs> like it's not if the plane <laughs> crashes it's not gonna go this one survivor who was hanging on for dear life and it saved him <laughs> it's like, you move yeah <laughs> so I almost I'm quite good like when it is turbulent like there are some times where I've been a bit like oh this is weird but all I can I can literally just go it's almost like in those moments I accept death like I'm like okay right this is, I, I think it's a lack of control I can go uh, this is this is fine and, and I'm quite good at relinquishing control in those moments and going what will yeah. be what what will be will be que sera sera I actually start singing during turbulent <laughs> moments que sera, you, you sera. and then 
Weirdly, everyone starts fainting and they've got their head in the crotch. <laughs> Maybe it's my singing <laughs> that makes people just pass out. I think it might out. be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you can rationalize. It always reminds me of that... Um, <laughs> it reminds me of that Will and Grace episode where he goes, well, okay, sirrah, sirrah, and, and Will goes, well, what the hell does that mean? He goes, whatever will be, will be, Will. It's in the song. <laughs> oh, what a great song. <laughs> um, oh, Doris Day as well. Oh, oh yes. Dozza, Dozza D. Oh, Dolly Daydream, <laughs> Doris Day. Oh, my God. DD, she's with me. Well, the reason Double we're going to... Uh, Talk, well, mine are bigger than that, babes. The reason we're going to talk about the platy jubes today is because <laughs> it's the platy jubes on Fab Life Day. I mean, what more fab could you get than celebrating a platy jubes on Fab Life Day? So, um, will I you know. be doing a street party, Lee? Or are you down south for it? Well, watch this space because I had nothing planned for it. And then my friend uh, is going to do the whole weekend. And th- they were saying that there's the concert on Saturday night with the BBC oh, Party that? at the Palace. Yeah. And it's run by the BBC. Anyway, a guy that I know is the production manager. And I just happened to message him and was like, listen, you know, what what's the deal with this? Do you have to get tickets and blah, 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 blah. And he was like, oh, yeah, tickets are sold out. Like, um, it was all balloted, I think. And then, but you can go and stand at the mall and everyone's going to watch from there. And he was like, but I might have some artist allocations left on on Leftover. So I'll let Mm, you know. So I did think if he does turn up with the goods, which, you know, if he doesn't, then that's fair enough or whatever. I was just checking. But if he goes, I've got some (laughs) spares, come and... (laughs) come and use them i think it would be a once in a lifetime opportunity to pass up because diana ross is headlining can i just tell you right now uh, oh my and she gosh, hasn't performed in like diana 15 ross. years oh, well i, I hope, hope she's still so. got it the sir david attenborough's are doing a speech i believe yeah, he's um, presenting beckham's it. gonna be there it's, i think it's roman kemp and someone else i can't remember the other Ooh. person um, He's but I think they're going to have. Me. I know. I thought of that. You know, they're doing the younger crowd. Um, mm. Who else is singing? George Ezra singing. I'm sure Elton John will turn up. Um, I love Elton doing John. Doing bits for the Queen, there. doesn't it? <laughs> I know. I know. He's had that knighthood for so long. It's like I'm still bloody chipping in, aren't I? Honestly, um, I'm still paying for this night. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber's going to oh, be there. A. He'll probably Dubs. be DJing like he was in Broadway that time, or he'll probably be oh, finally announced. He'll, he'll probably finally announce to the cast of Cinderella that they've not got a job anymore. Oh. Oh, he'll, oh, 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 a scandal. Now they'll probably make him perform first and then tell him at the end. So it doesn't ruin the performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he wouldn't tell him. He'll just put it on Twitter like he did last time. <laughs> Nightmare. That's <laughs> terrible, that, isn't it? I mean, but it's always happened that way. It's just now people have Twitter. So they are, they're just speaking out about it, aren't they? Mm. But yeah, so why. in answer to your question, I don't know. I think there are some street parties going on around here. I think my mum's going to one that's, uh, at their friend's big field. Um, but... I, I, I want to at least watch them come out on the balcony. Not as gay, but walk yeah. out onto the balcony. You imagine? <laughs> That's the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, imagine if Queen Elizabeth came out as gay. They do say, oh do, they do say Queen Elizabeth I was a bit of a secret lesbian, don't they? The Virgin yeah, Queen. Yeah, they do. Which is what yeah, they used to call me at university. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you dressed up as at that time, because you just felt like a real synergy with her as a, as a I was, person. I was going back to my roots. <laughs> <laughs> Your first inspiration as a gay child. Um, oh, Lizzie, when you studied the Judas in school, you were like, oh, what an icon. Oh. Um, <laughs> King, oh, uh, King Henry VIII, though, Jesus, what a grotesque Ugh. human being he was towards the end I of know. his reign. And you, they say as well, I don't like... want to bitch about the dead, but I think it's been long <laughs> enough that we can. Like, what is the cut-off point where you can start talking ill of the dead? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, too soon. Um, yeah, I think you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine taking the piss out of him. Because apparently, like, he's really glamorising all the TV stuff, isn't it? But, like... They can't make people look ugly enough because he was all like, 
um, like all like his face was horrible as well. Yeah, you know, like because he just didn't eat. Yeah, like he was all swollen. Like oh god, like that's. And he like, used to be a right catch back in his day. He used to I be know. like when he first came to power, he was fit as fuck. He was like Jonathan everyone Reece wanted Mayers, a piece you know? of him. I oh, know, no wonder he had eight wives. I mean, six. Why did I say eight? Oh, no, Henry VIII. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that coffee, Lee? <laughs> um, so, you, <laughs> so we be partaking in a bevy this weekend, regardless of whether oh, you street. Oh, God, yes. I, do, I mean, Jesus, I do that when it's not the platitudes, Lauren. Oh, but oh, maybe I should good. maybe I should find a cocktail that's a kind of <gasps> quintessentially English. I mean, it is said that a queenie the queen does tea? like yes, a queenie cock. It is said that the queen <laughs> likes a gin, isn't that right? It is, and you can. I've got an Earl Grey infused gin actually. Oh. That would be perfect, wouldn't it? Uh, because it's tea, which is, you know, we stole from India, but still. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's very British thing to steal from from other places. Yeah, from anyone, fair. actually, yeah. In fact, um, to mark this Jubilee weekend, I'm going to go and steal a load of ornaments from people's houses. <laughs> yeah, do it. Little corgis and stuff. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, do a Queenie Cocky Tea. Oh, it's a shame you missed that on the newsletter because you could have done that. As your oh, friend. what's that? She's giving a little drop Ooh. there, Lauren, mentioning it. It's so hey. kind. Ooh. Oh, well, I suppose I ought to explain what she means by oh, newsletter come on, tell for us. the people who tell don't us. know. <laughs> well, Lauren, I have indeed set up a newsletter, a monthly newsletter. I was very nervous about doing it, um, but a uh, uh, load of people have signed up. I literally thought it'd be like, I thought I'd be happy with 50 people on my little newsletter. Yeah. You know, that's a nice little and number. <laughs> yeah, no, they haven't fucking signed up. They don't give a shit. <laughs> but um, we're in the hundreds, Lauren. We're about 300 and oh. odd last time I checked. It's only been out for a few days. So um, if anyone oh does want to sign up, then I'm going to do a monthly newsletter um, which just has like live gigs and a uh, story here and there. Uh, and at the end, I do a cocktail recipe. So, um, love it. yes, it was and a margarita the find first it, one because I do love a margarita. Good question, Lauren. You can log on to leapit.net and there is all the details on there. Uh, leapit.net. Get signing up. And you plugged Fab Life Pod in the first uh, newsletter, which I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So uh, I'll probably be plugging it loads. I'll probably be using it to discuss a lot of a lot of bits and bobs. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so it went out. It went out. So um, I'm very happy about that. Thanks for the little name drop there, Lauren. (laughs) So it's like time. uh, When I mentioned (laughs) Dolly Sticks, your baking business. What? Oh, oh, another plug. (laughs) This is like plug corner. Well, Jubes, the platy Jubes, it's t- Dolly Sticks has taken over. She is oh, double yeah, booked this say. weekend. Oh, I, I actually need some staff on Saturday. If anyone wants to come work for me, I'm I'm desperate. Really? For some staff. You need like brand ambassadors. Uh, I need to be here. I've got I've reached out to a couple of people I know, but they're all busy. Well, I've got someone on standby actually. Um, who actually already has a job? She's friend of the pod, Amy. Uh, she's working for me on Friday. And uh, fingers crossed she's going to be working for you on Saturday as well. But uh, we'll have to see, because she has, like, a real serious job. She's a nurse. But right, okay. she's just a big fan of the old DS, you know. She loves the dolly sticks. So watch out for me, guys, on, on Big fan of the Ds. <laughs> big who's not on this pod, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not really, yeah. to be honest. No. You're a selfish lover, as you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So are you doing like, um, what designs are you doing? Well, I'm doing a Queenie cream tea cookie sandwich. That is my menu highlight and a big deal. So it's two white chocolate chip cookies. And then in between is like in the sandwich is a cream cheese buttercream and then raspberry jam in the middle. And it's dipped in white chocolate with a little Union Jack heart on it. So it's like almost like a Victoria sponge slash, you know, creamy nice. scone but in a cookie sandwich so that's good so that's the queenie cream tea and i've done like little like cake pops in the shape of the queen as well oh so great i know so i'm down at st Catherine's dock on the actual jubes which is today if you're listening on on fab life day 
Yeah, so it's going to be mad. And actually, oh, if you're really ill and you live in London and you listen to this, first 50 people get a free cookie sandwich because they've prepaid for like, they've just put loads of money into the event. So like they want it, oh. they want it to be busy. I need to get that on the socials actually because You absolutely good, do. I'd go all the way down there for a lot. free cookie. 50 yeah, is a hell of a lot. And can you just do a lap round and be like, I'm back? <laughs> <laughs> that probably will happen. <laughs> what if no one turns up? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, anyone want these sandwiches? Yeah, no, oh, no, I'm sure people will. It reminds me of the promo days where people just used to try and get as many freebies as possible. And it'd be like, listen, you don't need <laughs> any more key rings, okay? You just like the feeling of getting something for free. It was horrendous. Oh, God. It is, isn't it? And do you remember the Diet Cokes? And you used to do the Diet Cokes. We oh were so good at opening gosh. them. But someone would be like, oh, my, well, we can I have to. one? My friend's over there. And you had to mm. open it for them. They're like, can you not open it? And I'm like, no, I have to because people keep coming around. I <laughs> remember. For another. I remember you'd get it and, and they'd come up to you. And I'll never forget, I had to uh, do bloody... When, when they first brought out uh, Coke Zero and oh, I love the Coke client... Zero. I know, actually, because I hate a Diet Coke, but I had a Coke Zero too, the other day. And I thought, oh, it does taste like Coke. Because Diet it Coke is good. It gets bear. me through when I'm But the thing is, the only time I ever want a Coke is when I'm hungover. And the reason I want that is because it's full of sugar. So I don't really ever need a Coke Zero. However, back to the original <laughs> point. Um, so I was doing this bloody promo job, handing out free miniature bottles of Coke Zero in Manchester. Everyone swarming round trying to get a You hold don't get of it. a minute, do you? And the client was a Rottweiler. Every time you'd, you'd have to look at them, you had to open it for them and you'd go, same great taste, zero sugar. Same great taste, zero sugar. Same great taste. And you, because she was saying it so yeah. much, you used to like try and change the intonation. So it'd be like, same great taste, zero sugar. Same great taste, zero sugar. But then like <laughs> you'd be saying it so much that sometimes you'd get it wrong. So you go, same great <laughs> sugar, zero taste. And like, you'd be like, oh shit, sorry. Like, anyway, shit. then you'd have someone come up to you and you'd go, can I, can I take one? Uh, grab another from you. I go, I'm afraid it's just one per person. I'm so sorry. Oh, my friend's over there. I'd be like, if you get them to come over, she's in a wheelchair. Oh, okay. Um, she's got cancer. She can barely speak. Please. And it would be like, uh, um, okay, okay, just, okay, just take it. And it was just, they would give any old <laughs> excuse to have this same great taste, that zero sugar. Yeah. For a fucking f f can of Coke. I used to go, you could buy one for 70p from the pissing corner shop, but you're swarming around me. People would wait minutes, minutes for it. 10 minutes. Oh. I've had that at Angel Station and someone was like, she's over the road, she's in a wheelchair. And I was like, is she always there in the coffin over there? Is that you referring to? There is a I'd be like, take me to her. Take me to the wheelchair. I need to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember the Diet Coke slogan. Or was it full fat? I can't remember. But you had to, I had to do the same thing. And I just was like, hello for the, 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 the. By the end, I just couldn't do it. Just mime it. Uh, well, I, I, I had to do a Fanta one as well. And that was... Uh, What's the slogan? Uh, the slogan was, great taste, more fun, which didn't make oh, sense. Oh, yes. I don't know They're trying to be who. more fun, the adverts. Like yeah, that. So, so what you'd do is you'd have like a small can of Coke and I'd go, great taste, more fun. And they'd go, sorry, what? And you'd go, great <laughs> taste, more fun. And they'd go, more fun. Are you fun? coming on to it? And you'd, and you'd be like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, great taste, more fun. <laughs> you just ignore them. You're like, piss off. I'm trying to get rid of these cans of Coke. I've got 50,000 to get rid of. And the sooner we get rid of them, we can go home. <laughs> and someone else over there is ripping your arm off to get the next one. People like this, they with their arm out like weird. Oh, God. I remember one time I was leafleting and there was this teenage boy walking with his grandma. And I went to hand him a leaflet and he went to take it off me. And she went, don't touch him. <laughs> I was like... To, to, to her, to her grandson about me, don't touch him. As if like, I was going to infect oh him. I was like, it's only a fucking leaflet for Compede. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh, nightmare. The stuff anyway, we went sorry, through, went, went, on a <laughs> went on a tangent there. <laughs> That's promotional marketing. The world of promotional marketing for anyone who wants world to know. God, the stuff I've done. I've dressed as a fucking polar bear before and done promoted You've bird's done worse eye than me. fish fingers. Oh, <laughs> haven't I just? <laughs> the polar bear. You, I didn't, you never used good. to mind dressing up though sometimes because um, 
if it, your face was covered, no one knew it was you anyway, so... Well, that's true. Yeah, well, my face was covered because she ended up having to bloody sew it in. Um, or sew the costume in, which meant I couldn't take the bloody head off. So what, anyway. were you going for, like, a wee with your pull of her head on? <laughs> no, no, I don't, do you not know the story? I was, I was booked to go to a primary school to dress as Clarence the polar bear. Do you remember that polar bear from Bird's Eye that would sit in the fridge and you'd go... Oh, yeah. And you'd open the fridge and the polar bear would be like, come and have a fish finger, come and have a fish finger. It was a bit weird, and, that. Um, very weird, especially with me <laughs> as the polar bear. Like, what the hell? Um, no wonder that I woman said don't touch fish fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate fish fingers. Like, I genuinely think they're disgusting. So I, I was love like, fish oh, fingers. God, okay. Oh no, God, Lord, no. Um, anyway, so <laughs> turned up to this fucking primary school. The suit was too, the, the suit was too, the suit was too big. <laughs> Boris. <laughs> and uh, it kept slipping off. So she's like, I'm going to have to sew you into this suit. And then what happened is I'm there and I kept having to go to the staff room and have 15 minute breaks because you remember as a costume character, you like legally had to have have breaks every 15 minutes because you'd overheat. People Um, It was funny because I'd be like, they'd be like, the polar bear's overheating, guys. Get them in, get them in, get them a break, get them a break, get Clarence a break. So um, anyway, then the bloody fire alarm went off. The fire alarm went off and she was going, oh, we weren't expecting a drill. So I went into the staff room and they were like, oh, we need to get you out of the suit. But because I was sewed into the suit, it was going to take ages to get me out of it. And so then I was like, oh, she was like, you need to go out to the playground. But because I could take the head off, but she was like, oh, you'll ruin the illusion. So can you keep your head on? waddled out. So I had to go out into the playground and entertain the kids while they all did a bloody fire alarm. And I'm going, eh, couldn't speak. And there's always that one bratty kid who would run up to them and go, there's a man inside that. I can see his mouth moving. And I... And I'd be like, yeah, you can see my mouth moving because it's miming fuck off to you. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Accidentally kick him in the face. That's bird's eye. Bird's eye That one's bird's eye. None of these are our sponsors (laughs) yet, by the way, guys, but we're really working on building up a really good relationship with them. (laughs) So cork's out, bird's eye's out. Who else have we offended? Um... I tell you what, if Coke was our sponsor, I wouldn't be sat in my fucking mum and dad's dining room doing this, let me tell you. (laughs) Begging people to read your fucking newsletter. (laughs) (laughs) Quick, guys, let me get to the 400 mark. (laughs) Please, I'm begging you. (laughs) You should do in your next one, the one with Coke in the recipe. Really try and borrow it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, um, back to the platitudes. I'm going to read some yes. stats about... Oh, stats time. W- <laughs> it's just stats, and I just thought we could talk about it. Just so we have talked a bit about, <laughs> about what we thought we were going to theme this episode on. <laughs> Instead, we've just gone in down a right tangent. Well, I've oh. just talked about me, but to be fair, Lauren, you did say we were talking about the Queen, so I've just got confused. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So I did try and find um, street party fails, like some stories from, because there's been so many street parties back in time, I was like, there'll definitely be a buzz, um, what's it called, Buzzfeed like news thing, you know, leading up to the jubes. But you can't, because every time you Google it, you just get Boris Johnson, uh, you know, like party fails stories. Oh party God, gate and yes. All that. I wonder oh, if he'll be having nightmare. a mini street party. Oof. Don't know. You'll have to ask Carrie. She normally organises them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I wonder if they've got rid of that awful John Lewis furniture yet. The Johnny oh, Lulu. Oh God! Heaven I forbid. mean, that was the most offensive. Like, it was one thing using the bloody taxpayers' money to re- redecorate the flat, but it was another thing to use the most hideous choice of wallpaper I'd ever seen. I mean, that was the kick in the teeth. Yeah. And dissing John John Lewis as if it was like Alda, you know. I was I like, know, the rest we love of the a bit public. of Johnny Lulu. Oh, I'm the I've been in a bloody charity shop today buying new plates. Do you know what I mean? And she's the dissing John Lewis. I know we're all tired, Carrie. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the old platy jubes. So, 
Can you guess? So at the Diamond Jubilee, there was 9,500 approximately uh, street parties in the UK. This has gone up significantly this year. And how many do you think are say that doesn't happen? And it doesn't say that, that much, does it? doesn't seem like a lot. But when was the Diamond Jubilee? What's Diamond? Is that oh 50? God, what's Diamond? No, it's, what's it's Diamond? 60. It's 60. What's <laughs> 60, Diamond? right. Because gold is okay. 50, isn't it? I'm just thinking about... I, I yes, reckon is, that yeah. is probably going to double. I'm going to say around 18,000. Oh, you're not far off. 16,000 are due to take wow. um, place over the weekend. I know. Yeah. Really good. Um, but you have to... Uh, have you ever applied to do a street party? Because I wanted to do one for my 30th, actually. And it was a bit of an ag. Like, you have to apply you have to, to council Do you have to apply? Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't realise. I thought you just did it. Well, yeah, me too. There was um, uh, a politician on... I bet, in Lo- I bet that's in London, to be fair, because like well, down where I live, it's sub- suburb central. Like No yeah. one's going to apply to the council. They'll just do it. Like th- th- Where I live, just thinking about it, like it- it's weird, but it's almost like collectively everyone down the street owns the street, if you know what I mean. So it'd be like... Yeah, so they no one's going to dob you in, are they? Yeah, it's like, well, we do what we want. This is our turf. and uh, But I guess in London, it's quite difficult to shut off a street for, for Lauren's yeah. 30th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Trafalgar Square, shut off. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, names uh, not down, Dolly D's not turning 30. <laughs> 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 Could you imagine? Well, I was just going to do it illegal, though. I was just going to, because our street mm. is little, and no one really yeah, does. It's not got a thorough, it's not got a through street, you know? No, exactly. That's the thing. If you're like, if you're a main street and you, you're like connected to another street, then you're a bit fucked, I think. But if you're a cul de sac, you're fine. Um, yeah. But I will say that uh, some a lot of councils have waived the administration fees. So a lot of people oh. are getting them for free anyway. And oh. um, do you know where's got the, a record amount of applications? Somewhere posh. It's a county that's quite posh. Um, um, oh, well, I, was, I would say somewhere like Windsor or um, somewhere posh. Kent, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, you're kind of close, I think. Hertfordshire. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number. Hertfordshire. Yeah. 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 Because the that's kind of number. close close to London, but like almost very suburby. So, yeah, that doesn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah. People like to uh, travel in, don't they, to London? So they're keeping, mm. it, keeping it out there. Uh, yeah. And then what was the other one I was going to tell you? I think that's it, probably. It's just a lot. I, I read a lot of interviews with people who um, were organising the parades and some of the stuff they were having. It was like drummers, feature dancers, large scale puppets, as well contributions from students at local schools and churches. Well, oh. a friend of the pod, nice. Joe and Sally, were telling me about the street party that they're having um, f- <gasps> where they, they live one. over in, in yeah. Essex. And apparently the mayor of, uh, of the. Uh, I, I see. I assume it's Woodford or Redbridge area is popping in to to look. They're doing well, a talent yeah. show. All the kids like it's a very middle. Well, it's not actually. I suppose it's middle and like, but it's a very middle class thing to do, like a talent show and whatever. And you know, um, I just love it. The I, I kind of want to be out part in of full it. force. All the yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, the big and, chains uh, on. With their massive necklaces. Oh God, yeah. that is going to give them back problems when they're older. I know, it's their time to shine, honestly, the mers of towns. When I moved to London, I didn't realise that, like, mer was spelt, like, mayor. Because when you're from yeah. there, you say, like, the mer of St. Helens. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. So the it's mer of like East the mayor of East Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mayor, the mayor. I've met a few yeah. mayors in my time. The mayor of where I'm from, because years ago, I had to go back to my um, college and do a speech on, like, their award ceremony. And I started Lovely. not slagging off Grimsby, but I started saying how, you know, I was basically saying, you know, try if you can, if you, even if you don't go to university, try and go to other places across the UK or abroad and really broaden your horizons a little bit. Because, you know, it's a very small town. And I think I said something like, they don't even have a Starbucks, for God's sake. And like, <laughs> I was just kind of being a bit silly. Anyway, the mayor was furious. It was like, how dare you? 
yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh. I was like, oh, sorry, well, you don't have a Starbucks. I signed the petition to keep it. <laughs> anyway. Well, at least you know he's passionate about his town, you know. Don't want anyone yeah, to Yeah, yeah. But also, it's like, don't be so bloody sensitive. I mean, you know, I think a decent mayor should be able to recognise a place's flaws. And that's a quote that anyone can have. <laughs> yeah, great. Because I don't think he wants his name next to it, dearly. Um, <laughs> 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 we'll get so that should be uh, the first fab live tea yeah you know <laughs> them, i always thought that about do. quotes where it was like there'd be a quote and it would just say anonymous and you think yeah they, they didn't want to admit that that was them they no. didn't believe in themselves enough to know whether that quote would make it <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, or they did see it with their name and they were like do you know I'm, what you can, not, that wasn't me just take it off i'm not gonna name who it was i'm not gonna name who it was but um my friend was going through a, a breakup um, a few years back and um, we used to like send each other quotes, you know, that you'd see on Instagram and yeah. stuff. And, oh, um, God love you. Well, yeah, God love us. <laughs> and uh, and uh, anyway, then we started making up our own quotes and um, <laughs> she turns to me one day and she's like, I've come up with this great quote. And I was like, okay, go on, what is it? She was like, I thought the grass was greener, but I didn't realise it was just mud and slush. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that is one of the worst quotes I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> so now I'll just sometimes oh send her a message saying, mud and slush, <laughs> mud and slush. <laughs> it's all just mud and slush. She's obviously been listening <laughs> to like from Avril Lavigne, you know, to try and get over like some emo music. <laughs> <laughs> Name of a first album, uh. Modern Slush. Um, uh. Oh, we must say before we sign off, actually, that we have to thank the Platy Jubes meme dropper from our yes, inbox. Yes, of course, That's the reason Alex. we rem- Yes, we remembered that it was the Platy Jubes because he sent us a lovely meme about someone yeah, calling he, it Platy Jubes. Yeah, he said someone <laughs> called it Platy Jubes, and I thought that must have been Lauren. Someone's, someone tweeted on the tube. saying, I've overheard someone refer to the... <laughs> Platinum Jubilee is the Platy Jubes, and he sent he tagged us in it, and I thought that's Lauren. It's hundred percent Lauren. Oh, I'm at the Platy Someone's Jubes. Someone was on her bus. <laughs> Platy Jubes. <laughs> Someone was on Lauren's bus. Lauren was staring ahead, trying not to get travel sick, just going Platy Jubes, Platy Jubes, Platy Jubes. I've got to get home. Prep for this Platy Jubes. <laughs> oh, I got to get well, home because yeah, the mares come in. The mares come in. <laughs> <laughs> can't even do it can't even do it oh god i've got to go home for my illegal accident. street party guys it's just a cl- cul-de-sac <laughs> there's ambulances trying to get through all day but i'm celebrating my <laughs> le- illegal street party <laughs> i am not taking this bunting down for that ambulance van um <laughs> <laughs> well uh just to sign off i mean do all the things for us guys if you have an iphone mm. or any kind of apple device please uh subscribe and like on uh, Apple Podcast and write a review. That's the only place you can write a review and that. That means everything t- to us, doesn't it, Lee? <laughs> yeah, or you can review on Spotify as well. You can't write one, but you can give us a little five star on Spotify if you, if you listen on Spotify. Um, or if not, just, um, yeah, go and go and listen, enjoy, enjoy your life. Enjoy the platy jubes as well. I hope whatever you're oh. doing for it, whether you love the monarchy or whether you can't stand the monarchy. Oh, I tell you what will be exciting. We might get a glimpse of Harry and Meghan. I want to see the reaction Oh, I hope that. so. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love Meghan's style. I, I personally so I can't quite to see like what she them. Was. Oh, I, I think yes, great. Yes, me too. Yeah. And apparently it's the first time that um, the Queen will meet Lilibet. Because oh, she yeah, hasn't met Lily Bet yet. I know. Oh, that's quite sweet, actually. Well, yeah, yeah, enjoy your extra day off is the main thing, I guess. And uh, it's what the Queen would have wanted. Well, we'll want. It really is. After working solidly for 70 years, uh, she finally gets an extra day off. Although she won't, she'll have to sit through that. She has to come out, doesn't she? Come out the closet. Making small talk. <laughs> <laughs> Making sm- she has to come out into that balcony. Ooh, I wonder what colour she'll wear. Maybe red Ooh, or blue. It- It'll have to be red or blue. I'm going to guess blue. Oh, maybe, maybe we could put a white. poll up on our Instagram. <gasps> maybe yeah. white. Maybe white. Mm. Maybe rainbow, like Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, which I believe are performing. She's coming There's out. There's loads of musicals performing at the concert. 
oh great yeah, she wait. is coming oh, out rainbow <laughs> flag <laughs> so you know maybe it is a rainbow solidarity Solidarity. I can't believe we used our Platinum Jubilee episode to suggest (laughs) the Queen might come out as a lesbian. Like, it's so not okay. (laughs) She won't mind. She's very liberal. Um. We're only joking. We're only joking. We love the Queen and uh, long may she reign. (laughs) Even though she is 96. Long may she reign. (laughs) We'll look forward to that outfit as well, Liz. Um, but in the meantime, have a fun tabs week. And thanks for listening to episode 15 of season two of Fab Life. With Lauren and Lee.